Ciao amici, this is Morena with Morena's Corner and today I've got a really fun project for you from Crafts Unleashed. This has been one of my most popular posts on the site and it's transferring a photo to wood. So since you've had so many questions about it, we thought it would be fun to make a video so you could see exactly how you can turn your photo into a beautiful piece of wall art on wood. Let's get started. For this photo image transfer, we're going to be using an unfinished wood wall panel, Mod Podge photo transfer medium, a foam brush set from Mod Podge, and a color photocopy of the picture that you want to use. It's important that you're using a color copy that's heat set and not an inkjet copy or an actual photograph. Those won't transfer. That's why it has to be a color photocopy. So let's get started with this. First, I've already trimmed my photo so that it fits my board. Now we're going to start with the photograph. We're going to use the Mod Podge photo transfer medium. And I'm going to use my brush to get a nice even application on my picture. Now I want it to be thick enough that I can't quite see the photo underneath. And I want to make sure that I don't miss any spots. I'm going to need some more there. I'm just going to keep brushing it on until the entire surface is covered. You can see it's not quite even. I've got some spots here. And if we don't get this nice and even, then you could end up with some splotches that just don't transfer. And we don't want that. All right. So now that I've got that covered, let me move this messy mat out of the way. Take my photo, flip it over, set it on top of the wood, and carefully press it on and work to get all the air bubbles out. Okay, some of the medium might squeeze out the ends. You're just going to want to wipe that off. I like using my hands, so that way I can feel if there's any air bubbles under there. You could always use a brayer or another tool. Uh, you could use an old credit card. But you want to make sure that there are no air bubbles and that there are no transfer medium bubbles where maybe you put a little bit too much and the image isn't going flat down. So. Now that that's there, we're going to let that dry for 24 hours and come and check on it tomorrow. All right, so now we're back a day later and my paper is completely dry, so now I'm ready for the next step. I'm going to take a washcloth. I've wet it and I wrung it so that it's wet, but you see it's not sopping wet. I'm going to work one section at a time. What I like to do is press my washcloth onto the surface like this. You see it's getting wet. And I work one section at a time. So once I have that dampened, and it's really important, you want it to be damp, but not soggy wet. If you get it too wet, you risk taking the whole thing off, including your image. So we're just trying to get this paper backing off, and we want to leave the ink on the surface of the wood. So you see it's already starting to loosen there. I start rubbing gently. You see there how it's coming off? You could even use your fingers <clears throat> if you wanted to. And there we go. It's coming off really nicely. See how easy that is? As long as you get it, you know, damp, but not soggy wet. So there you see some of my picture coming through. I'm going to go on to the next section. Working a little bit at a time, like I said. This 
Some people like to do this with their bare hands. Um, you could use a spray bottle and just spritz a little water on the surface and then use your fingers to rub it off like this. I'm starting to see some trees back there. So I let it dry for about an hour, and now I can see the spots that I missed. These white kind of fuzzy areas that I call them, you can see these much better after it's dried. I usually do at least two, sometimes three passes to get this really nice and clear. So I'm gonna go back as I did before, and you can see that flaking off, get these pieces that I missed, and just clean it up. I'm gonna let that dry one more time, and then do one last pass. So to finish up my project, I used a dust buddy to wipe off the last little fuzzies that were left there and to get any you know pieces that I missed. And then you can seal it. Um, you could seal it with Mod Podge. You could seal it with wax. I like to have a really clear finish. So my favorite um, product to use is this triple thick clear glaze that I also got from Consumer Crafts. So spray that on and then spray it again, which I've already done here. And you could probably see better in the photographs that it gives it a nice glossy finish. It kind of locks in that moisture that you need to keep the colors looking vibrant. Once you let it dry, um, you might see a little bit of fuzziness to it and then the colors tend to look more like a vintage picture. So if you want to keep it nice and bright, you'll need to seal it. But that's it. Doesn't it look like a photograph that's been printed onto the wood. You could paint the edges, you could stain them, or just leave it as is. I, I like the rustic, you know, kind of worn edges there. These will make great gifts, um, beautiful to display in your home, and now that you know how to do it, start practicing. Make a few. Have fun crafting and creating. Ciao!